Somebody was talking to me the other day, he was talking about this fairly well-known preacher, especially in the Assemblies of God, and uh, they were talking about, yeah, he's a, real, he's a real stickler, man. He's one of these guys, you know, babies crying out. You know, one of those guys. I just thank God we got babies in the church. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They don't cause me near as much problem as their parents do. Praise to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My message this morning is entitled, Healing in the Streets, which kind of goes along with what we've been talking about, I think, this morning. And uh, I'm going to pick up with some of that and go with it. But first, I want to kind of remind you a little bit about last week's message. You know, we were talking about obeying God, and we was using the passages from Acts chapter 4 and 5 and 6 in there where the apostles had to make a decision whether it was better to obey God or obey man. Amen. How many know we got to make a choice sometimes? And you know, we all know that in this day and age, sometimes our choices are getting a little tougher because some of our laws are not as friendly to Christians as they used to be. Amen. And we're blessed this morning to have Travis Hankins with us. Wave, Travis. Travis is uh, running for Congress. Uh, you have any questions for him or about how everything works, go talk. If you got any complaints, go give them to him and not me. Amen? Hallelujah. Got any complaints about church? Go to Joanna. Praise God. She's got, the, she got that thing on her. She ought to know something. Hallelujah. Oh, I didn't mean to take it off. I just... I saw that, Jeff. That was... Man, she, you, she, you thought she said stand up? She said shut up, huh? Oh, man. Well, last week we saw that they, they basically were, were arrested, threatened. They went back to the gang and said, Man, we've got to praise God. We've got to give God some glory. We've got to tell some people about Jesus. Lord, give us the boldness. Give us the power. Give us the ability to be able to do it. And how many know they went right back out? Amen. They went right back out and did some more preaching got arrested again. This time... Angels let him loose out of the prison. Glory. Hallelujah. I think some of us need to get out of our prison a little bit. Amen. Get back out there where people are at and let them know that Jesus loves them. He's called us to it. We're going to talk about that just a little bit this morning. I'd like us to go to Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. We're continuing in our series, the book of Acts we're not moving any too fast. There's a lot in the book of Acts, amen? We'll be getting a little short. You're going to think, man, we'll be still be doing the book of Acts next year. Well, the last half of the book of Acts is all about Apostle Paul and his adventures, and some of that we'll talk about and some of it we won't. But uh, praise God for Apostle Paul, amen? But in Acts chapter 5, we're going to go to verse number 12. It says, And through the hands of the apostles many signs and wonders were done among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Yet none of the rest dared join them, but the people esteemed them highly. And believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities in Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they, some of them got healed. Is that what it says? No, it says they were all healed, amen? Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I long for a time when we can see everybody healed. You know, I want to see that happen. I don't know why it doesn't happen to you. No, there, is, there isn't a reason why it shouldn't happen. Everybody should be able to receive healing. And someone asked me not too long ago, we were talking about someone who'd passed, and they wanted to know, well, what, it, what is it? Is it because we just don't know how to receive? Well, that might be part of it. I don't know. Do we not have a clear understanding of scriptures that he wants to heal us? Possibly. I mean, I could probably give you 20 reasons why people may not be healed, and one of these days I'll, I'll do that sermon again, you know, because it's a good one because it gets us thinking. The number one reason people do not receive healing is because of ignorance. They don't even know that God is willing to heal them. They don't even know that he would want to do that. Some people will think, well, it's because the days of the apostles has passed. They're not doing that anymore. God's not doing that anymore. He loved them a whole lot more than us, I guess. I don't think so. 
He's the same yesterday, today, forever. If he was a healing God then, he's a healing God now. Amen? I mean, that's just the way it is. Part of it might be because we're just preaching to each other. We're not out there preaching it to people who need to hear it. I remember the first time I even, I even had an understanding that God healed today. I was reading a book, and uh, it was in this book, and I was like, what? I've never heard that. I didn't go to a church that preached that, you know. And if it had, I would have been kind of young when we were in church. I, I hadn't been in church for years, so I, I may have not even paid any time. I'd probably been coloring or something anyway, you know. Probably didn't catch it, but God heals today. Yes, he does. Nothing's changed. The only thing that's changed is perhaps our boldness. We're not praying for God to get all over us so we can get out there and get with it. Amen? You know, we, we, you stand in, you hear something so much that you just take it for granted. And it's something that Jason said to me during worship. And we were talking about this Friday night in our men's meeting. We, uh, you get to a place where you go from just believing into knowing. Does that make sense? You know, it's, it's, not, it's not that you're having to try to believe something anymore. You know it's true. You've got that revelation. It's down in you. It's part of you. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And we proclaim what we know. We proclaim what we believe. We proclaim those things that are within us. You know, I believe that if God's moving, he's going to start moving outside the church. If we look at this passage of Scripture, I think we can see that the, that the power of God, you know, they were, they were preaching in the synagogue. But the next thing you know, they're out in the streets. There's people out in the streets getting healed. Some people say, oh, well, it doesn't say that Peter's shadow actually healed anybody. Well, why did they even bring it up? Amen? Why would you even put that in there if there wasn't manifestations and stuff happening? Hallelujah. I've heard of people praying over pieces of candy and sending it to sick people, and they got healed. Amen? Prayer claws. Hallelujah. People get healed. You know, sometimes we need a little something to grab a hold of, just like the woman grabbing a hold of the hem of the garments, amen? And you've got to have a little bit of a tangible manifestation. Why would God even need us to lay hands on the sick and see them recover? Because some people just got to have a contact, amen? It's not that they don't believe God, but at the same time, there's this whole thing about touching God and getting a hold of God, and their prayers seem like they're just going this far. I've got to get a little further than that. I want to go all the way, amen? I want an open heaven. Hallelujah. I want God I want God to touch me and touch me good. Hallelujah. As we read this, I see several things in this passage that I'd like to bring out. And the first one is that I'd like you to note is in verse number 12 it says that there were many signs and wonders. So our first point is there's healing through the apostles' hands. How many know that the apostles were those guys who hung around and followed Jesus? And there's always an assumption when you talk about people in the Bible that everybody in the room knows who, they, who you're talking about. But uh, the apostles was, you know, James and John and Matthew and Peter and all these guys that traveled with Jesus. Basically, the 12 is who they're talking about to begin with. But actually, as we study through the book of Acts, you'll find that there's more apostles than just those guys. Uh, in fact, they even, they even raised somebody up to take Judas's place. You know, when, uh, when Judas uh, bowed out, so to speak. We, uh, we know that the apostles healed people. We can see through the Bible. We can see that there were signs and wonders and healings and miracles. God used the apostles. But how many know it didn't stop with just them? Amen. Jesus said, the things that you've given unto me, I give unto them. And those who believe, amen, on their word. So you and I have the same responsibility to carry the gospel message and the same ability to carry it with power. We have the same ability through his power to be able to manifest the power and the spirit as they did. It's just a question of whether or not we're going to have the boldness and believe and step out and do it. Now, there were signs and wonders there. Now, I don't know about you, a sign and a wonder isn't always just a healing. Amen? I mean, there's different kinds. There's other things that could happen that could be a miracle that wouldn't necessarily be a healing. Amen? Donkeys talking. How many know that that's a miracle? Amen? Hallelujah. Though Travis is going to get to hear, oh, well, we won't go there. Hallelujah. He'd be up in Congress hearing a lot of that. But we, uh, we, we can see all kinds of things happen that are miracles. You know, walking on water. That wasn't a healing. Amen? 
Hallelujah. But it was a miracle. 